Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by Cask and Q or Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and today we got something special for you. It's a review of the Rocktown Distillery Collection. Stick around. So Rocktown Distillery, based in Little Rock, Arkansas, has set out an adventure to do something special, and they've really delivered. I think it's great that Rocktown Distillery is putting Arkansas on the whiskey map. I think Rocktown Distillery has something to say in the whiskey conversation. So when Abby with the marketing team at Rocktown Distillery reached out to me about doing a review of their new and upcoming product, I couldn't say no. In fact, it's an honor to help her get their product out there on social media. So Rocktown Distillery did give us a media kit that includes three samples of each new whiskey. And this is all part of the Column Steel Collection. So enough talk, let's go ahead and do the unboxing. Where's the whiskey? Just kidding, it's at the bottom. So from Little Rock to Stuttgart to Bardstown, happy tasting guide. It's kind of just the road trip and, oh, what's all this? Oh, so there's a, a QR code right there that you can scan. That's gonna show you the, uh, the music that Phil listened to. Phil's the master distiller. What he listened to on his way to Bardstown. Um, why did they go to Bardstown? Well, I'm gonna tell you here in just a bit. So we've included a mixtape curated by our founder and head distiller Phil Brandon. Scan the barcode, hit play, and sip your way through his bourbon experience. Nice little postcard from Arkansas. A very cool postcard from Bardstown. And not to be outdone, Stratton Seed from Stuttgart, Arkansas. And they included a cool sticker. And the mixtape. Love it. Let's check this out. Very nice packaging, very classy, high-end feel. Let's see, Rocktown Column Steel Collection, Rocktown Road Trip. Little Rock, Arkansas, to Stuttgart, Arkansas, to Bardstown, Kentucky. And we have Phil Brandon's uh, signature there. That's really cool. So Rocktown Distillery is the first step. Number two was Arkansas Corn and Wheat. That's where they uh, harvested their, uh, their grain. Uh, three is uh, Stratton Seed in Stuttgart, Arkansas. Four, they transport it to Bardstown, Kentucky. Number five, column distillation in uh, Bardstown, and then obviously the barreling. In March of 2020, Phil Brandon, the head distiller, set out on a mission to find a way to keep up with the demand of their whiskey. The search ended when he found out about the collaborative distilling program that Bardstown offers. And this program allows him to use the same locally sourced grains that he uses in his bourbon. Working with their grain partners, Stratton Seed in Stuttgart, Arkansas, 180,000 pounds of Arkansas-grown corn and wheat were trucked 500 miles to Bardstown. And so that's where this adventure began, making Arkansas bourbon in the heart of Kentucky. And out of that effort, they've produced a line of three different whiskeys for our enjoyment. So thank you to Rocktown for providing these samples to us today. Let's get into the review. So a few months back when Rocktown contacted me about doing a review for their column steel collection, they were kind enough to give me a full tour of the distillery and uh, I was even able to sample a little bit of that whiskey. Let's take a look at that real quick. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good.
So this is a 25 gallon barrel. I think this is a 20. Or 20. Yeah, those other three are 25. Okay, those other three over here are 25. And these don't do a lot as much as What char number do you typically? Four. It's a four char? So the, the heaviest char on that is, you know, kind of the industry standard. Yeah, is four this four char? Yeah. And so these are two to three or two different types of barrels. Okay. Oh, really? Right. So you have used Cooperages that are here? Yeah, we have a, there's one of the hot springs called Gibbs Brothers. And so we got the 20, we get all of our 20 gallons from them, and we get all of our 25s from Kelvin Cooperage in Kentucky now. So. Okay. So that's where these come from? Yeah, so the silver, so the bright silver, silver rings are Gibbs, and the darker rings are the Kelvin. And the Kelvin, that's the one that's from Kentucky? Yes. Right. And that's from Hot Springs. Okay. Scoop out a sample, and then we're going to go check Okay, and that's the char that comes in. Yeah. So now they're checking for the proof. Uh, it's good color on that. Yeah. Of course, it's, it's, it's close to three years old now. So three? Yeah. Well, I think it's like thirty four months. Yep. What are we doing here? So we're going to check the proof of that barrel and put the probe in there. And we have our density meter here that will tell us the proof. We'll put in a sample name, single barrel number seven. Click start. It'll suck in a sample. It's going to try to uh, compensate for the temperature. It's going to try to get it to 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's really dark. Yeah. That's pretty amazing that that's done in three years, and so yeah. that smaller barrel really it makes a difference. It, the, the small barrel and the small warehouse. Yeah. So oh like, yeah. Like the big huge trick houses in Kentucky, you know, there's a lot of thermal mass there, and you know, the, and it takes a long yeah. time for those. To yeah. Be it's, it's more seasonal there than you know, whereas our warehouse is more like that, almost daily temperature change. Yeah. yeah. Um, at least weekly, you know. Yeah, I've, I've toured most of the I say, okay. I've toured. You can tear it off of there for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 119. We'll put some in there. We'll save a little bit for quality assurance. And uh, then we got to do all of our documentation. We'll uh, calculate the angel share, how much, you know, evaporated out, and uh, document it all so that we know that the barrel's been dumped and processed. This, the first two numbers are your year. So this was put in the, when it entered the barrel. So 2020, right? C is the month, A being January. So this was March, March of 2020, the 31st. I don't know what the A means, yeah, I don't find out what that means. Uh, rated capacity is, it's a 20 gallon. This is our serial number. And then this is serial number, or barrel number seven of this batch. Gotcha. Does it say A because Alright, so this is a sample of what you just saw poured. So this is a single barrel 120 proof, about sure. 120. Yep. And uh, on the nose, lots of vanilla, caramel. I wouldn't say I really pick up much alcohol. Of course, I drink a lot of, a lot of brands. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't uh, have the ethanol. That no, it doesn't have that. And the, it doesn't smell like it's new, like yeah. grainy. And so this was aged in a, a 20 gallon, 20 gallon barrel, right? Yep. So. Um, that speeds up the aging process somewhat. Correct. Yeah. That's so. Man, that is delicious. Yeah. I mean, just really good. You get some oaky tannins on yeah, the back of the tongue, but other than that, it's vanilla and caramel. Yeah, vanilla caramel, a little bit of oaky tannin, but it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't take away from the, the pleasurability or, or the drinkability, I should say, of the whiskey. So very, very good job. Thank you. So we'll, we'll roll that stainless steel barrel that we jumped that, just dumped that one single barrel into. It'll get it hooked up here and the pump will transfer it from here to the bottling system and it'll fill up this tank here. And from here, it will get sucked up into these lines and go straight into the bottles that will get filled up right there on the other side.
Oh, that smells good. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Now what's happening right here? So this is the, the still is heating up. And so right now we're having vapor going up the column and it's gonna start condensing uh, and then blowing up through the sight glass there. But uh, our temperature is rising once it gets to about close to 178 and we'll start getting uh, fluid coming up. There you go. There you go. You have your good alcohols and your bad alcohols, right? Okay. So the heads are? The lower boiling point alcohols, like methyl alcohol, acetones, um, they come off first. See the outer yeah. yeah. And then the parts are all the good alcohols, the ethanol that we drink will come off for the majority of the distillation in the middle. Then the heads are the, I mean the tails are the final um, higher boiling point alcohols, like amyl alcohols, and there's real copper. Okay. Tasting. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's the receiving tank where it separates the three. And if we get rid of the heads and the tails, we only keep the hearts. Makes sense. We keep the hearts some places like we use the heads instead of the tails. They'll recirculate the heads the and back into the uh, what they call the beer well. And then it just basically goes right back into the still. And uh, they do, I think the tails, they discard the tails for the most part, I think. I think so. Yeah. But the heads will recirculate, whereas we discard all of the heads and all the tails and yeah, only keep the good stuff. And you watch the temperature where? So right. we kind of at the condenser here. So we like to keep our condenser within a certain range. And also we have a, another temperature deflamator on the back. So we control the water flow with this valve here. And we'll kind of increase and reduce the amount of water flow to control that temperature. Do you know where this copper still came from? It's uh, from Vendome in uh, Louisville. Louisville, okay. Is it? Okay, I got you right there. That's where it's. That's where it's collecting. Sorry, my camera didn't. Heads, right? Okay, so that's the good, the Sorry, good, Trent. yeah. Just breaking everything. <laughs> it's ready to go through. They got to make sure the machine's calibrated. And okay, so right now we're kind of just waiting on the uh, on the process to finish so that the bottling can start. Check it, make sure it's on there right. What was on the other machine? It seems. Ah, it's on the other machine. Sorry. The other one's
And it would be a throwback, yeah, different. Yep. <laughs> So this is the small batch straight bourbon whiskey coming in at 92 proof. And second, we have the toasted French oak barrel finish straight bourbon whiskey. And I'm pretty sure that this is uh, Phil's favorite of the three. This one is my personal favorite of the three. Uh, at least it was when I tried them at the distillery. Uh, we'll see if things change. So this is the single barrel cast strength straight bourbon whiskey. So here we have the cast strength. Here we have the, uh, the toasted French oak finish and of course the small batch straight bourbon whiskey. And I do have a palate cleanser here, just some H2O. So let's get into it. Uh, let's just start with this one over here on the left. Right away there's a sweetness, also some leather. You can definitely uh, get a sense of the corn in this one. The color is nice and golden. Yeah, that one's got some viscosity to it. Let's take a sip. Oak forward, sweet. There's some pepper some allspice to balance out that sweetness. And I think I'm getting some of that leather taste on the back end a little bit. It's not bad. It's got a bit of a graininess to it, but it's very good. The toasted French oak barrel finish straight bourbon whiskey. Ooh, that's nice. Caramel. Honey, like honey roasted peanuts, toasted bread. Almost like a graham cracker kind of thing going on, sort of. Let's go to the palate. Hmm. Oh, velvety, great mouthfeel, robust, bold, full, rich, nutty. Still got some of that graham cracker thing going on. It almost reminds me of a breakfast cereal with spice. So yeah, that one's excellent. I really like that one. Um, and, and it lingers, the, the finish is really long on this one and strong. It lets you know that it's there. Very good. Okay, so let's get into this cast strength. Hmm. I think I like the nose of the toasted barrel more. Oh, there it is. Brown sugar, spice, leather, caramel, very strong, but in a good way. It's not like alcohol punching you in the face. There's a hint of maybe some orange peel or something like that, like a citrus. I don't get the nuttiness that I did from this one. Let's give it a taste. Wow. There's a lot going on on that one. Of course, I'm a cask strength kind of fella. Cask strength is very oak forward. Great legs on it. Got some baking spices, some brown sugar, but like a burnt brown sugar. This one seems more prevalent. That brown sugar seems more prevalent than it does in these others. Man, that oak is just popping. But it's not that harsh green oak flavor. It feels like a mature whiskey. And only being 34 months old, I mean, that's really damn good. The alcohol, I mean, it definitely lets you know it's there, right? So this is about 114 proof, so you would expect a little more punch. And it, punch it does, but I'm digging it. While I do like the, the straight bourbon, just the plain one, it's really good, especially for 34 months. I mean, it's, it's really good. Um, it's between these two for me. And as much as a uh, cast strength kind of snob that I am, uh, man, I gotta go with this toasted French oak. 
I really thought I was gonna prefer the cast strength. Now, you could put some water in this, and we may do that here in a second to see if it calms it down a little bit and opens it up, because this one does feel a little wound up and kind of tight. Let's do that real quick. Pour just a little more for, you know, science. Okay. So with this bourbon being only 34 months old, I mean, it drinks a lot more mature than what the age would indicate. And that brings me to a point that I was talking to Phil uh, when I was there a few months ago. And, uh, you know, I asked him, what, what is your, the longest whiskey you've ever aged? And he kind of looked at me puzzled and he said, why do people always ask me that? Does it really matter how long it's aged if it tastes great? He did, you know, make me think, why does it matter how long it's been aged to the consumer? I didn't really have an answer for that, other than I'd just like to know. Let's add a drop of water. Maybe three drops. Definitely calmed it down. So that opened up this whiskey, this cast strength tremendously. So this one opens up the sweetness a bit more. Uh, obviously the alcohol burn isn't quite there. Light brown sugar. There's even a light citrus note. <clears throat> it's hard to pinpoint which fruit. It's still bold, but it's, it's not in your face. I mean, it's really pleasant with a drop or two of water. Oh, completely different experience. Wow. <laughs> For 34 months, this bourbon kicks ass. It is fantastic. All of them are great. My least favorite is this one, but it's still good. I, I still gotta say the toasted French oak barrel. Ooh, just the graham cracker and the the candy, uh, like candied apple. Uh, oh, it's just good. The, the Cracker Jacks kind of thing going on. <sighs> this one's fantastic. This is the hard part. I'm trying to remove myself as a as an Arkansan, as someone that just, you know, has gotten to know some of the people at Rocktown, that's hard to do for me. So this review may be a little bit biased. So, you know, like I said before, I was gifted these bottles here. They came in as part of the media kit that I showed you. So before I go to the score, if you kind of like what we're doing here and you think we're not terrible, then go ahead and like, subscribe, and smash that bell. When you hit that bell, it's gonna notify you that I've uploaded new content. So, as far as the score, so let's go to the, yep, this is the small batch uh, bourbon whiskey. So, 1 to 10, taste, av availability, and value. The taste is really, really good. Um, I think a few more years of aging would help that one. Um, I feel like it's young. I do. Uh, so, but being what it is, knowing that it's 34 months old, uh, knowing that it's going to be available to me and knowing that I like the way it tastes. I think this was a solid seven for sure. All right, let's scoot that out of the way. Our last two, we're looking at toasted French oak barrel finish, straight bourbon whiskey. Man, I just can't quit smelling this one. It's got all kinds of cool stuff going on and I can't pinpoint everything, but I know that it's more complex than what it should be at that age. Lots of graham cracker, man. That's just what I can say about that one. Uh, cracker Jacks, uh, some cereal, some oak, a little bit of spice, some brown sugar. It's got all kinds of stuff going on. This one's going to rate higher for me. Uh, this one's an eight. But they really hit it out of the park on this one. So back to the cash strength. You know, I'm torn. I think I'm seven and three quarter because it's just so close for me for these two. Uh, this one, you know, I, I think the reason I picked a lower score is because I had to add a drop of water for it to be competitive with this one. So there you have it. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Justin and we'll see you next time.